morning. Welcome to God's house today. A special welcome to any visitors we have with us. So happy uh, that you've joined us here today. We are just a few weeks uh, removed from our celebration of Easter, and we've been worshiping under the theme Resurrection Reality. We've been exploring the different blessings that are ours because our Savior lives, and we continue that exploration here today. Let's begin our, our worship here this morning. We'll do that by singing our opening hymn, He's Risen, He's Risen, May God Bless Our Time Together. We begin today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. If you are able, please rise. As we come before our holy and almighty God, we can clearly see that we have fallen short of his expectation and demand for perfection. We have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. To whom do we turn? your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone has lived a perfect life, never once sinning against the will of God the Father. We bring our sins to him and leave them at the foot of his cross. to try. 
trust in Christ alone for the pardoning of your sins. His willing sacrifice on the cross was a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And his blood alone has washed away the sins of the world. to trust in the cleansing power of the blood of Christ. It is through the blood of Christ that your sins have been removed forever. You've been given a new life, free from guilt and shame. Christ covers you with the robe of his righteousness and purity, giving you the strength and ability to live a new life of thanksgiving and praise. Let us trust in Christ alone to guide us in this life and into the next. God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite you to give your attention to our scripture lessons. The New Testament lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 3. The context here, Peter has just healed a man who couldn't walk. And a crowd had seen this, and so it gave Peter the opportunity to preach to them. And he didn't hold back, but yet he spoke the truth in love for their eternal welfare. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus, the word of the Lord. This time we hear an anthem from the children's choir.
If there's other children that would like to come up and join them, you're welcome to come up here and sit in front too. Thank you so much for singing today. That was wonderful. Come on up. Plenty of room. It is wonderful to see everybody here today. I want to introduce you to uh, two people. This is Bobby and Susie. Can you say hi to Bobby and Susie? I want you to pretend that Bobby and Susie are real people, and they've got two problems. And their two problems are this. One, they need to go to the bathroom really badly. And two, they're blindfolded. And I should add a third problem. Three, they've never been to St. John's before. So unlike you, they don't know the layout of the building and where the rooms are and the bathrooms and, and things like that. If no one helps them, how do you think this is going to end for them? Is it going to be good or bad? Yeah, it's going to end badly for them. They're not going to get the relief that they want. It'll be a, a mess and it'll be embarrassing and, and sad. So how do you think we can help Bobby and Susie who have these problems? What can we do? Okay, yeah, we could take their hand and, and lead them to the bathroom. What else? Take off the blindfold, yeah, and maybe tell them where the bathrooms are at, right? They need some help, and we've got information. We know the, the, the information that they need to know that will help them and give them relief. The reason I share this with you is I want you to know that our scripture lessons today remind us that there's lots of Bobby and Susies in the world that have problems and, and need help. They're blindfolded in this way. They don't know that their sins are a real problem. Our thoughts, our words, and, and our actions, the things that we've done to make God sad and, and hurt other people, people don't know that they deserve punishment and hell for those and that they need relief for this. And if we leave them blindfolded, they are going to eventually end up in hell, and, and we don't want that to happen to the Bobby and Susies of the world. We've got a message, a meaningful, wonderful message to share with them, and that's the, the message of our scripture for today. Why don't you read this with me if you're able to? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You didn't always know that in your life, but God put people in your life to tell you, to remove the blindfold, to help you to know that, that you are sinful and that you deserve God's punishment of hell for that. You should be sorry for your sins. And so as Christians, we do that. We often say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Can you say that with me? God. I'm sorry for my sins. That's a, that's a good thing for us to do on a regular basis. God, I am sorry for my sins because that keeps us focused on Jesus, the one who forgives us, the one who has purified us, washed us clean of our sins that we can spend forever in heaven. Yeah, God put people in our life to help remove the blindfold for us, but there's still Bobbies and Susies in this world that need our help. And so that's God's encouragement for us today. Those who have had the blindfold removed, let us share this message with people. The message of sin and grace, we call it, or law and gospel, or confession of sins and absolution. We actually just began our service in that way. Let us share this good news with people so that we can spend forever with them in heaven. Let's pray about this, okay? Dear Lord, we thank you uh, for uh, the children of St. John's. We thank you for their, their wonderful gifts. Uh, they were on display here today. Uh, we thank you especially, O oh Lord, that you've uh, done a wonderful thing for all of us, that you've removed the blindfold. You've led us to, to say we're sorry for our sins, and you've led us to believe in Jesus, our Savior. There's many people in this world that don't know that, don't know that message. So help us to, to help them. Help us to remove that blindfold so that we spend forever with them uh, in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. If you are able, I invite you to please rise for our gospel lesson today. The gospel is taken from Luke chapter 24. It is Easter evening, so just think what the disciples were going through on Easter evening. They're in fear, behind closed doors, trying to figure out everything that's going on. And Jesus appears to them and gives them a mission. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's join together in the hymn of the day. We'll sing along with the Koine video. Uh, just one note, the very last line, uh, they slow down the pace a little bit. Yes. 
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This past Monday, April 8th, parts of North and Central America got to experience a rare phenomenon, a partial or total solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is when the moon which orbits around uh, the Earth, uh, when the, the moon blocks Earth's view to the sun. Not the entire Earth's view is not, is not blocked, but there's certain parts of the Earth where it is blocked, either partially or totally. Here, uh, where we live, it was 90% blocked. There was other parts of North and Central America where it was 100% blocked, and right in the middle of the day, it got dark and look like this. You know, solar eclipses, they don't happen all that often. Partial ones happen two to five times a year at certain places in the world. Every 18 months, there are total solar eclipses, at least somewhere in the world. You might say, in a sense, that solar eclipses unite the world in this way, that we all have the chance to experience them at, at some point in our life. You know, on Monday, I, right around the time that the solar eclipse was happening, I turned on the TV, I started watching ABC's coverage of it, and I heard some of their reporters just waxing poetic about this entire uh, solar eclipse event. They were in Cleveland, Ohio, where they, it was was totally dark at that time. And it was just amazing, it, very emotional. Robin Roberts, she's holding back tears, and she says this, it's hard to express the emotions you feel when you see something like this. The whole totality of people who go to see it and know we're all together like this, something I will never forget. Another reporter, Whit Johnson, said this, we spend our lives feeling like we are in control. But then you see something like this and it reminds you that there are greater forces in play here. I find that liberating. Yes, for many people, they find solar eclipses to be meaningful events. And even in some cases, they think solar eclipses are spiritual experiences for them. It reminds me of what King David said in Psalm 19. He said, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Through nature, through nature's phenomenons like solar eclipses, God is preaching sermons to the world. It's pretty eerie, though, that right in the middle of the day, it gets dark. But then it's really uplifting when the sun begins to shine. You know, as we think about solar eclipses, it reminds us that there is another example of light and, and darkness in this world. And the whole world loves it when we, we see the light and, and hear about the light and experience the light. Just one example of that that just came across my Facebook feed uh, this week. It, it's from the past. It's 2002, or 2022. It happened at the, the World, uh, Little League World Series. And the picture on the left, that batter is about to get hit in the head with a pitch and, and knocked down. But don't worry, he was okay. He bounced right back up and, and he ran to first base. But while he was on first base, he noticed, and if you look at the picture on the right, he noticed that the pitcher was really bothered by the fact he just hit this kid in the head with a pitch. So much so that he was, was crying. And so what did that batter who had just gotten hit, who was on first base, do? He walked over and he gave the pitcher a hug. <laughs> yeah, there's examples of light like this in the world. And, and everybody in the world loves this. We love to hear about things like this and, and see things 
like this happening. But there is also scary darkness in the world. This past week, you might have heard, O.J. Simpson died at the age of 76. It gets you thinking back to 1994 and some of the events that took place there. O.J. Simpson, famous NFL football player, retired at that time. Famous actor at that time, better known at that time for being an actor. A well-liked actor, by the way. And then he is accused of killing his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman. And we remember all the drama. He sure looked like he was guilty. But yet in the court of law, he is acquitted. He is found to be innocent. There is doubt still today. Is O.J. innocent or was he guilty of these crimes? But at the end of the day, someone killed two people. And there is scary darkness like that in the world happening all the time. Yeah, there is darkness. The darkness of sin in this world. The whole world would be united in their agreement on that. And because of the darkness of sin, (laughs) things like this happen. I, I just recently bought something off of Facebook Marketplace. I don't often do that. Maybe that's part of the reason that I felt like this. But I bought something off of Facebook Marketplace and I was supposed to meet a total stranger in Jackson to pay them and and receive this. And and while I wasn't overly worried about it, there was still something, you know, in my stomach, just a little bit of nervousness, like, what am I getting myself into here? Do I really need this? That I'm going to meet a total stranger somewhere. Do they maybe have ill intent for me? Because we've heard things. We've seen things. We've experienced the darkness of sin in this world and in our own lives. Yes, the world is dark with sin. Very easy to see. But the Apostle John here today has another message for us, an important message for us to to consider. That it's not just the world that is dark with sin. I'm dark with sin. And you are dark with sin. 27 times in this short little letter we know as 1 John, John mentions the word sin. He's trying to emphasize that for us. Each of us is dark with sin. But John also has another wonderful message for us. God's solution to the darkness of our sin. A solution that allows us to enjoy light and to shine that light in this world. Let's talk about that here today. The resurrection reality. Two truths to unite the world. Some verses from 1 John chapter 1. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make God out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. You know, goal setting is a very important uh, thing in our lives, and that's exactly what uh, the Apostle John encourages us to do, to set a very lofty goal for ourselves as We live our lives on this earth. John says, children of God, 
followers of Jesus, make it your goal to never sin. Not once in your life. In fact, not only make that your goal, know that this is God's goal for you. This is God's demand of you. Perfect thoughts in your mind, perfect desires of your heart, perfect words that should or shouldn't come out of your mouth, perfect actions that you should or shouldn't do. No sin. Not just occasionally, but every moment of your life. What a, what a lofty goal that God has set for each and every human being. And as we think about that goal, we look at the world around us and we see the world has woefully fallen short of God's perfect light goal to, to never sin. But even more disturbing than that is that you and, and me, we have fallen short of God's perfect light goal. What sins in your life are you oblivious to but are just totally obvious to other people? Make that your assignment this week. Go and talk to someone that you trust in your life and ask them that question and see what their response would be to you. What sins in your life would you just be horrified to have to share with the congregation here today. And just know that each of us has sins like that. But God is aware of all of our dirty secrets. God knows every last bit of it. And as we think about our sin, it, it leaves us with varying levels of, of guilt and, and shame and embarrassment. But the key question for us really today is this. This is what John wants us to wrestle with. When it comes to our, the darkness of our sin, do we own it? Are we willing to take responsibility for our sin? Or do we come up with other solutions to deal with our sin problems? Solutions like this. Would we rather make comparisons, compare our sinful life to that of, of other people, and, and maybe we come to the conclusion that I'm not as sinful as, as some other people, and that must count for something in God's book. Or do we sometimes use this solution to our sin problem? Do we laugh it off? Sin, it's, it's no big deal. And if someone in my life is trying to help me understand that my sin is a big deal, they're just overreacting. We just laugh it off. Or how about this solution? Do we rationalize our sins? Do we look at the world around us and we see that, that certain sins that people used to clearly think was sin and, and would call sin, now they seem to be acceptable and do we rationalize our own sins in that way that maybe that's true maybe some of my sins are actually okay now i can be a christian and still do things that that the bible says are wrong because now society says this is okay do we sometimes turn to this solution where we justify our sinfulness because i've had it tough in some way in my life. Or maybe we feel that God has been unfair to us or someone else has been unfair to me. And I need a little bit of that, that relief, just temporary relief and fun in my life. We justify our sins. Or how about this solution? Do we ever just avoid our sins? We just, we just don't think about it. We don't talk about it. If someone tries to talk to us about our sin, we, we don't want anything to do with it. We just avoid the topic altogether. Yeah, do we own our sins? Do we take responsibility for them? Or do we look for these other solutions? And if we go down the path of these other solutions, we're just 
going along with the world and buying into their lies about ourselves and the darkness of our sins. We're, we're seeking liberation. We're seeking freedom in places we shouldn't. Kind of like the people that looked at those solar eclipses and they felt like, wow, this is the most spiritual experience I've ever had in my life. It brings some sort of temporary joy, but no long-lasting relief for eternity. You know, the Apostle John, he comes to us here today and, and he says this. If we claim to have fellowship with God and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. There are two truths that John wants us to know and, and to embrace here today. And, and the first one is simply this, that, that we are dark with sin. It's not just the world's problem. It's my problem. And it's your problem. We all have a sin problem. We all deserve God's wrath and punishment of hell. That's what we rightfully have earned for our dark sins from the God of perfect light. But the other truth that God wants us to know and, and to embrace today is that God has a perfect solution for us. And the solution is not comparison and laughter and rationalization and justifying and avoiding our sins. No, the solution day in and day out is this. Listen to John. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. What is it that unites dark sinners like us with God and, and with each other. John goes on and clarifies it even more. Listen to this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yes, God does not want us to lie to ourselves about the seriousness of our sins. God wants us to own them. God wants us to take responsibility for those sins. Yes, God wants us to understand and remember this, that each and every one of us is really just an addict when it comes to sin. We struggle with it each and every day of our lives. And so how do we respond as, as an addict? God says, I want to hear real meaningful confession of sins from you. Privately, publicly. And I want you to have this desire in your heart, this craving for his absolution. Good news to deal with the darkness of your sins. God does not want us to look at the confession of sins and absolution like so, it's some sort of archaic rite from the past that we shouldn't do anymore. Confession of sins and absolution, that is the heartbeat of being a Christian. That is breathing for us as Christians as we exhale the, the dirtiness of our sins and we inhale regularly the pure air of Jesus' love and forgiveness. Yes, confession of sins and, and absolution, this regular habit in the life of a Christian, this prepares us to hear and receive the good news of our Savior. Yes, the resurrection reality for us is this. Jesus' resurrection is proof that we have a real Savior. A real Savior who shed his real blood on the cross so that we could have real purification for the darkness of our sin. 
Jesus' resurrection, it is proof that we have a real lawyer who stands each and every day in God's real courtroom, interceding for us, advocating for us, so that we continually hear from the lips of God, I love you. I forgive you. Heaven is still open to a sinner like you. Yeah, the world is dark with sin. People are looking for meaning and hope. And they're searching for meaning and hope in places that don't give meaning and hope. They look to solar eclipses and say, wow, this is like the greatest spiritual experience of my life. Christian friends, we have a real message of meaning and hope. Confession of sins and absolution, sin and grace, law and gospel. These are the two truths that unite the world. So let's share this message of meaning and hope with the world. Let's embrace it ourselves each and every day and let's live it and let's shine the light of this message in the world. And let's watch the Holy Spirit do his work so that people know these truths and enjoy them now and for eternity. Amen. I invite the congregation to please rise. Let's confess our Christian faith here today. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. At this time, we will gather the thank offering. While it's being gathered, please take a moment to sign those red friendship registers.
invite the congregation to please rise for the thank offering hymn. Congregation may be seated. Our worship continues with the responsive prayer of the church. We're keeping our prayers here today. Tom Larson. Uh, Tom is the brother-in-law of Steve and Lori Bierman and Dave and Sandy Drizwicki. Uh, Tom is currently on hospice care with not long to live. We pray. Oh Lord God, our strength and song and our salvation. You filled your promises by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thanks be to God. You give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In your compassion, you sent Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life to rescue the lost. Drive out all doubts and gloom that we may delight. Lift our eyes heavenward to see him who lives to make intercession for the saints and grant us confidence in the greatness of his power. Keep before us the vision of your redeemed people standing before your throne and singing the song of victory. Make us instruments of your peace as we bring the good news of hope and new life to those around us. Guide us in the use of all that you have entrusted to us, our time, our talents, and our treasures. Merciful Lord Jesus, grant healing to the sick and strengthen the faith of the suffering and the dying. We especially ask you to be with Tom Larson. Assure them of your abiding presence and comfort them with the hope of eternal life. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. <laughs> Gracious Father, you have restored to us the joy of your salvation. With happy hearts, we come before you and say, Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. I invite you to please rise as we close with the final hymn.
everyone. Wonderful to, to have this opportunity to worship with you. Uh, I'm going to invite forward um, Paul Voigt. Uh, he is representing us as part of the Stained Glass uh, Ministry Action Team. We just have a brief presentation for you. We're reaching an exciting step. We want to kind of share with you uh, the design that we came up with. While Paul is uh, walking up here, uh, please uh, take note of the bulletin insert. Please grab that accidentally before service. It was last week's uh, pre-service PowerPoint. So that if you're looking at that schedule, that's not the correct one. The correct one is on this, this gold sheet. Also, I believe it's a flower sale going on today yet. Is there going to be somebody at the table? All right. So as you head, head down the hallway towards the elevators, a table there. Uh, the annual uh, Partners in Education flower sale uh, is taking place. Oh, you got one? All right, perfect. I'll turn it over to, to Paul. I got that for you. Just like press this button to advance, this to go back. As you heard. Okay. Um, we had a gift given to us gracious gift, and through that gift, there was a caveat in that gift that we come up with stained glass windows in our church. Um, the committee was formed. Uh, there's myself, my wife Lisa, Monica Wagner, and Martina Knipperath were on this committee. Uh, we spent several meetings together. came up with uh, this presentation. This is our recommendation to the church. Um, window one would start here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. what it would look like in our building when when finished and like I say this is the recommendation from our Matt to uh, the church membership for uh, voting on in, in two weeks yeah, so April 28th, we are going to have a, a voters meeting. Can you just click back, Paul, and maybe just kind of let them, uh, let that soak in a little bit, or maybe go back one more even, and, and kind of uh, just see what this would look like. So um, what you're looking at is really, uh, we're trying to tie it in with what we already have up here. So we got Jesus, the good shepherd, we got uh, Jesus knocking on the, the door, and so we kind of felt that, that we are St. John's, and so we've already got some I am statements of Jesus up here. So we wanted to make the other eight tie in with, with these two. So all the passages come from either the Gospel of John or the, the book of Revelation, uh, which John was inspired by God uh, to write. So we just kind of feel this really ties everything in with what we have already and kind of hits uh, some themes that, that we want to, to hit of Jesus' I am statements. Any, uh, if you've got questions about any of this or comments, uh, you are welcome to any right now that you'd like to ask. Emily? Oh, gotcha. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, if you're on the stained glass uh, ministry action team, can you just stand up? Martina's up in the balcony. Monica, Lisa, Emily, Paul, myself, Pastor Arndt. So if you've got feedback for us if you got questions for us uh you know feel free to to share that that with us um we what we will plan to do is uh email this out to the congregation so you can look at it more closely we'll also print up some colored copies of this and have them available for next week so that you can pick those up and, and look at them more closely and and offer kind of your your input um, on this so uh, we do plan to have a voters meeting like i said april 28th um, and we want to uh you know hopefully you love the idea 
and we'll move forward with that on, on the 28th. But if you say, you know what, we have some suggestions for changes or things like that, that's okay too, and that will just take us a little bit longer to make those tweaks and, and to get final approval um, on the project. But uh, we just feel like this is a wonderful direction to go and would be a real blessing uh, to St. John. Tom. The other thing we did come up with is we may have a flyer that will sit back in that stand where we have information for the pastors and our church in that, that when people come, they can look at that and understand what, so. Yeah, after the fact, once we have them in there, just an explanation of our, our windows and, and things like that. So maybe one other thing just to make you aware of. Um, with that Bible verse that's on there, you'll notice that these two do not have the Bible verse. So one thing we are suggesting to the congregation is if you look at the, the two bottom square windows there, we are suggesting that maybe we have the Abilene Art Studios redo those and, and put in the Bible verse for these particular windows so it would tie in uh, with the, the top windows as well. So just food for thought, uh, consider that and how you feel about that as well so all right you know who we are feel free to, to share some some thoughts with us and and we appreciate uh, your extra time uh, here today god bless your week